Да, здравейте отново и тук. А, виждам, че а, доста хора се закачат на презентацията. Както и на предходните презентации, ще изчакаме а, на една-две минутки, за да можем да дадем възможност на всички, които се интересуват, да се присъединят към а, презентацията на Utrecht University. Да използвам още веднъж възможността да разкажа малко повече за услугите, които Skylines предлага. Всъщност нашата роля е не само да ви запознаваме с различните възможности за обучение в Холандия, но също така да ви съдействаме и при подготовка на документи, целият процес по кандидатстване, при евентуално успешен прием, съдействие с настаняването, което последните години очевидно се превръща в доста сериозен проблем, доста сериозно предизвикателство. Както можете да видите на снимката е изписано ник, но всъщност това е мено, което ще направи презентацията. Ще дадем още една минута, за да могат да се присъединят повече желаящи, тъй като предходната презентация, доколкото виждам, все още не е приключила. Well, Мено, the, the presentation of Radboud University is still on, uh, but uh, slowly, slowly I see that the people are joining in. That's great to see. Yes, okay. Well, you already, you are a host already. I see that uh, Katya is uh, here, so she can help you with the questions. And, uh, well, you can probably say a few words uh, to introduce yourself, and then you can share your screen and, uh, and start the presentation. I see that slowly, slowly the people will come in. Okay. Uh, great. Thanks, uh, thanks, Dimitar, for introducing me. And uh, I, I don't speak Bulgarian, but I understood that you explained that my name is not Nick Lowe, as you see on the screen, but instead it's Menno, Menno Kramer. Um, so thanks for having me again, Dimitar. Uh, we've worked uh, with Dimitar for, uh, for a few years now. It's uh, been uh, going really, really well, and uh, we're happy for the chance to, uh, to meet you here uh, online. Uh, obviously, it would have been even better if we were able to see you in Bulgaria. But uh, now, I think we're all getting used to this new situation. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready uh, to tell you a bit about Utrecht University, uh, about our programs and what's been going on at the university. And I also look forward to answering a lot of questions from you. So if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and uh, Dimitar and the team will, uh, will be happy to answer it for you. And of course, uh, maybe ask some to me as well. So we'll be looking great. Um, let me check in with Dimitar to see if we're ready to, uh, to start the presentation or you wanna wait a few more minutes. Well, please, uh, you can start the presentation. I don't want to annoy the people that are on time. So let's... Uh... Exactly. All right. Let's give it a go. All right. So I'm hoping you all can see the screen, see the presentation. Good. Okay, so uh, for those of you not familiar, this is uh, the logo and the name Utrecht University and our slogan is Bright Minds, Better Future. So my name is Menno and I'm from the Communications and Marketing Office of the Central University Department. So we oversee uh, the promotion of all of the programs uh, in a very general sense um, and I think that this gives us a good chance to give you a basic understanding of the university and what you can study at Utrecht. Um, so I don't know how many of you uh, have been to Utrecht or have been to the Netherlands. Um, for those of you familiar with uh, the west of the Netherlands, this is sort of what it will look like. I'm sure you all know Amsterdam, probably The Hague or maybe Rotterdam. Um, as you can see, Utrecht is sort of located in that cluster of cities, which is often referred to as uh, Randstad. 
Um, but basically, this means that all the big cities, all the big four cities are located in the same area. And in, in a way, creates a metropolitan area of uh, between, I think, five and seven million people. So it's really a very populated area of these four cities and all the towns in between. You can see also uh, the travel times uh, by train, in this case, um, are very uh, decent. Um, the connections are very often, so you can grab a train uh, uh, every 30 minutes or sometimes even every every 15 minutes to go between these cities. And it's also very normal for people in the Netherlands to uh, live in one city and to work in another city. And myself, I am an example. I live in Rotterdam. This is my house in Rotterdam. Uh, but obviously I work for Utrecht University. So I go up and down, um, normally speaking, every day. Uh, to Utrecht and now in, in Corona times, I just work from home. But to give you an idea of the mobility of the Netherlands is quite good. Utrecht also has the largest train station in the Netherlands. Uh, I think it has 15 tracks at this point, so that's quite a lot. Um, and that means that it's a really a central point for all the trains to connect. So it's very, it's very easy to go to other parts of the Netherlands as well, in the, in the east or in the north or the south, where there may be more nature areas or other cities with different um, uh, cultures and experiences. Okay. So a little bit about uh, about Utrecht. This is a, a snapshot of the city. I, I like this picture, first of all, because it shows how beautiful the city is, but also because it combines a number of things that really, I think, speak to Dutch culture. Uh, the one where everybody sits on the terrace in nice weather, obviously, once again, nowadays, not so, this is not possible because of coronavirus um, uh, restrictions, but in the normal time, this is what you would see in, in, in Utrecht all the time. Um, uh, there is a bike in front, right because Utrecht and the Netherlands is very famous for bicycling and bicycle culture uh, we have uh, the most number of uh, dedicated bicycle paths of any country in the world um, so uh, yeah that's really ingrained into our culture so that's why it's funny to see that in this picture and you see in the background the famous Dom Tower one of the oldest uh, churches in the Netherlands and the largest church tower in the Netherlands. Uh, so yeah, it's I think it's fitting that for a city from the 17th century in the center of the country also has the highest tower from that time. So if you're into, into history and, and architecture, uh, this is really uh, just a joy to walk around. There are about uh, 67,000 students in the city on a population of, I believe, uh, 350,000. Uh, in any case, around 20% of the city is, is students. So that really means that, that one out of five people that you see is a student. It's a true student city, including all the, um, uh, the infrastructure and the experiences that a student city has to offer. Okay, so a little bit about the university. Uh, you can see here a snapshot of our uh, law and economics department, which is in the city center. Uh, you can see from the architecture that it go, that it has this long history. Uh, Utrecht University was founded in 1636, so that's a really, really long time ago. Um, we have been established as one of the uh, yeah, best ranked traditional research universities uh, in the Netherlands and in Europe. And you can see here some rankings uh, from, I believe, 20, 2020. Um, 12 Nobel Prize winners, uh, we have 31,000 students, so the number that I showed you in the previous slide, that's the total number uh, of students in the city, and our university has 30,000 of those. Um, oh, let's go back one. We also have 10% international students. So uh, there are some universities in Netherlands that have a bigger share of international students. Uh, Utrecht has a very good number of international students, but it's it's 10%. So it gives you a sense of that the majority will be Dutch, but there is a good group of internationals as well, uh, including Bulgarians, but also from all over the world, obviously uh, not outside of European Union as well. Uh, we have about 120 programs in English with 100 or and more than 100 nationalities represented. So it is, in that sense, quite large and diverse, the university. OK, so about its reputation. I think that it was mentioned in the chat somewhere that Utrecht, uh, is a, Utrecht University is a research university. So again, a more traditional, um, uh, theoretically based uh, university. Uh, so a direct link to research is very important. Um, uh, one of the uh, vaccines, for example, for COVID-19 uh, was co-developed with uh, Oxford uh, 
and Utrecht University Medical Center, um, even as far back as the beginning of the pandemic in, uh, in the early uh, months of 2020. Um, so you can see that even in very relevant and recent topics, Utrecht University is, is, is yeah, cutting edge and sort of on the, um, uh, on the forefront of medical innovations and, and other types of uh, scientific discoveries. Um, so for a student, that means that if you study at Utrecht University and you're interested in uh, going into research, this is a good place to do that, to prepare yourself, for example, for a PhD program. Um, in reality, most students do not end up studying for a PhD. Um, most students end up uh, in the business world or in government or in other types of um, uh, non-research related fields. So it's good to know that we also have a, quite a good link with the professional field. In many programs, you'll have opportunities to do internships or to uh, um, you know, connect with companies that are uh, linked to your professors or that your professors know uh, about these companies. So they have contacts there, for example. So it can help you build a network as you are studying in Utrecht to get in, in contact with companies or organizations that you might work on in after you graduate. Um, yeah, so the, 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 the teaching style is, is, we would say, personal and interactive. It's a, those words can be a bit vague, but what we mean is that classes are, are relatively small. Uh, you do have lecture halls where you would normally sit with about 100 people or so in a lecture hall uh, and you would listen to a lecture, but also uh, you would have a t a tutorial groups or you would have um, uh, assignment groups that are uh, groups of 30 people. 10 people, five people, uh, to make sure that you have more interaction and you can have a, a better understanding um, of the material rather than just listening to a lecture and trying to remember what is being said. So we find that this smaller groups works better in, in many cases, and, and that's why we use a combination of both. Um, yeah, one of the things that are important in terms of our uh, mindset is that uh, students become critical and independent thinkers. This is base, This is the basis of, uh, of all scientific uh, thought and, and, and progress, really. So it's important that we educate students with these mindsets to always be critical of information they receive from a scientific perspective, to do independent thought with the scientific background that they have received, and to be able to yeah, help shape the world in a, in a, better, uh, in a better way uh, in the future. One of the words that you'll hear a lot in Utrecht University is sustainability. Uh, this is becoming a trend all over uh, the world, but obviously for Utrecht University and the Netherlands, this is quite an important factor. Uh, the Netherlands is one of the low-lying countries in the world, uh, so we have to deal with, uh, with rising water uh, uh, levels. We have to be ready for all types of uh, climate change, so this is a topic that is very uh, significant for Utrecht um, University. So you'll see a lot of programs focus uh, on this topic, even if at first glance uh, you're not studying anything related to sustainability or to science, uh, the, 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 pro the problems that you will solve, societal problems, for example, or economic problems, they will also have a relation with this theme of sustainability. So it's good to know that studying at our university will almost always give you a chance to contribute on this specific um, uh, uh, theme, regardless of your studies. Okay, and interdisciplinary uh, means that you can study things from different departments. So if you are studying economics, again, you can also look at scientific themes throughout your study. So it's, it's easy to, to combine your program with other fields of study because we have a large university with many, many different types of programs. Okay. Um, I'm running a bit a bit long, but I understood that we have a little bit extra time. So I hope that you'll uh, that you'll excuse me uh, for that. Uh, otherwise, I'm sure that the team will let me know from Skylines. Um, okay, so these are our, uh, English taught bachelor programs. Um, these are all again taught in English. Um, you can see there's a big, there's quite a diversity there, in terms of a field of study. So of course, depending on your interest and your background, these could be the programs that you could be interested in. I want to highlight a few uh, molecular and biophysical life sciences that you see that here on the screen. Um, that is a new program that started this year. Very excited about it because uh, it really um, yeah, is focused on a field, obviously, that's quite important at this very moment with uh, the pandemic going on. Um, so if you're interested in, 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 in epidemiology or in, in medicine in general, uh, from a scientific perspective, then this could be a good one to check out on our website. 
Okay. Uh, we also have university colleges. Uh, they, those have become quite famous in the past 10 years as well. Uh, these are liberal arts colleges. So that means that you pick your program by selecting courses from all around the university. Um, and you get a liberal arts degree in a more sort of North American style uh, education as well. So if you have any questions about any specific program, please let me know. For now, I will, I will move on. Again, guys, you can see here, everybody's sitting on the terrace. We, we are missing that now. We've just been stuck in, indoors all this time. So we look forward to having this kind of uh, lifestyle again soon, hopefully. Okay. So these are the uh, master programs. <clears throat> um, uh, in fact, actually, these are not the master programs. These are the fields of study uh, in which you can do a master's degree because we have over 100 English taught master programs. So the words you see on the screen, these are just the fields in which you can study um, a master program with us, but there's many uh, programs to choose from, including a uh, master of arts, a master of science and LLM degrees for those law uh, programs. Uh, the programs are between one and two years. Um, and the bachelor degrees on the previous screen, they are three years. So that's also good for you to know. Right, okay. Uh, moving on. So a few important dates um, every year for the intake in September. So for starting in September, the application opens on 10 October on the year before. So if you're looking to start <clears throat> in September 2021, then the applications are, of course, already open. Um, uh, and the deadlines for application is between 15 January and 1 April, depending on the program. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on. Um, uh, but yeah, the deadlines are coming up. There's also a deadline for accepting if you are uh, uh, admitted to the university. So you have to accept an offer. That's the 1st of June. And the semester starts on the 1st of September. There are some programs that also start in February, but uh, those are very few. And for the sake of uh, yeah, simplicity, I won't talk about that here. I will focus on the September uh, intake. So to give you a sense of what the application looks like if you're applying for a bachelor program, so um, the first thing that you would need is, of course, your high school diploma. Uh, and what we do is we see if it's equivalent to a Dutch diploma. Uh, now, we have good experiences with uh, Bulgarian high school diplomas. And of course, our partners at Skylines can also help you figure out if your diploma is admissible to Utrecht University. Uh, they have a ton of information. They work with a number of different uh, Dutch research universities. Um, so they can give you a very good idea of your admissibility to our programs um, in that sense. There are also some subject requirements that will differ per program. So if you're studying economics, it's important that you have included mathematics to a certain degree in your uh, high school uh, time uh, so that you uh, know enough about that subject to be able to, uh, to study this. Um, English language tests as well. Uh, these are required for students that have not been educated uh, in the English language, or at least the program that you followed was not in English. So then you would have to take an English test as well. Um, we accept IELTS, TOEFL, IBT, uh, which also can be taken online uh, through what's called the TOEFL Special Home Edition Test. This is something that we have started accepting from last year onwards because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. I know there's always many questions about uh, English language tests and if you need one or not. So please feel free to ask them. Uh, but I think in most cases, uh, the information should be very clear cut for students from Bulgaria. Um, and you will quite easily know if you need one or not. Okay, so uh, if you're interested in a master's program, uh, what you would need is a, a relevant related bachelor's degree. So that means that your previous education, your bachelor's degree uh, must have, uh, must be related to the program that you're interested to study on your master's level. Um, uh, so it's not really possible to switch from one type of uh, field to the other. It has to be sort of in line. Uh, it, it, sometimes universities will offer pre-masters where you can kind of switch between fields of study. We don't offer that. So if you're interested in, um, in, in, in your own field, then you could look for the masters. If not, usually it becomes more difficult to be accepted. Uh, you can see the English language test requirements are a bit higher. Uh, again, it depends per program, <clears throat> but the same rules uh, apply uh, it, uh, in order for you to prove your English proficiency. 
You would also need a CV or resume for a master's application, a motivation letter, and uh, uh, recommendation letters. Sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. Again, it, there are over 100 programs, so it does really differ. Uh, the best advice is to just yeah look at the program website to get specific information. All right, um, let's see. <clears throat> so now we go to the next slide. So in terms of finances, this is the tuition fee uh, for, Europe for students with a European passport. So I'm assuming most of you will have that as Bulgarians. Um, uh, your tuition fee is 2,168 euros. Uh, this is a subsidized uh, fee. Uh, so that means that you already are getting a discount based on the fee that students from outside the European Union um, um, have to pay, which helps explain, of course, why the Netherlands is a popular destination uh, for, uh, for students. Um, yeah, the quality of education is, is really quite high uh, for this price. So this is really always a good point to, uh, to stress. We do have an application fee um, for students uh, that have not studied in the Netherlands uh, previously. This is 100 euros. Um, you have to pay that once uh, during the application process, and you can apply for multiple programs at Utrecht University with this fee. Um, in terms of living expenses, it's going to be between 800 and 1,000 euros per month. This depends on, on your spending habits, but it includes accommodation, groceries, insurance, study materials. Um, the biggest expense is always accommodation, uh, as you'll find out that uh, the Netherlands is a very densely populated country uh, with lots of students, both uh, domestic and international. Um, so the demand for housing and the price for housing is relatively high. So we'll get into that a bit more later. There are no restrictions for work um, uh, because you're a European national, uh, but we do advise students to keep it to two days two days per week maximum just to make sure that you don't overload yourself with with yeah with part-time work uh, where you of course your study should be your first priority so just keep that in mind and the picture you see here by the way is from our uh, university campus of uh, uh, the university college Utrecht in the center of Utrecht okay all right, so we have uh, some information uh, to share we have uh, open days coming up uh, for master students, uh, for master seekers, we have open days on the 19th of February, so that's coming up quite soon. And for bachelors, it's going to be the 13th of March. So if you want to know more about a specific program, I really recommend this because it's a really great opportunity to really get in touch with the teachers, uh, with the staff, with the students, to hear them speak, to hear them talk about the program, uh, and to learn more about yeah, what it would be like to be in Utrecht. Obviously, it's not going to be the same as traveling here, but it's way easier because you can just do it from home. So I guess there's a trade-off for that. Um, yeah, really, uh, I, I recommend it. And if you're interested, of course, Course, you can find all the information on our website, uh, uu.nl, or just find us through Google. Okay. Mm, I'm going to continue on. If there's any questions that uh, uh, sh I should address now, then please let me know, Dimitar or, uh, or anyone else, uh, and we'll just keep on going in the meantime. So this is probably a sheet that uh, you'll all be interested to hear more about, application, admission, and financial uh, matters. Um, oh, I continue on. <clears throat> so what kind of student are we looking for? We're looking for students that are uh, independent, uh, so that can uh, arrange things uh, also by themselves. Uh, Netherlands is a country where we value independence quite a lot. So that means that the university has a lot of services that you can use, but these are services that you need to ask for yourself. So if you need help with studying, if you need help finding a room, if you need if you need help um, uh, in any type of uh, situation, uh, uh, you know we have a whole lot of services, but we're not going to hold your hand through the entire process. A lot of things you'll have to be doing independently. Um, uh, once you arrive in Utrecht. And of course, we are there to, to guide you, but it's important, again, to know that students that are you know, independent, that can, 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 can take care of themselves, those are students that typically do quite well in, in our uh, university. Uh, curiosity, of course, uh, you know, being, being curious about different topics and things is, matters because that makes you yeah, a, an interesting and good student. Open-minded, eh? Netherlands is quite a, a, a sort of liberal and, and progressive country. So in terms of social policies or in terms of environmental policies, we tend to be more uh, uh, yeah, left-leaning or liberal, let's say. Um, so that means that 
having an open mind, being being open to new experiences is a, is a really good uh, yeah thing to have if you study in Utrecht. Um, again, personal responsibility was mentioned. So time management also important. important. Keep in mind that you're going to have to figure out how to do multiple tasks at the same time. Um, this is a skill that every university will teach you. Uh, this will also be part of, of, the, of the skills you will acquire at Utrecht. Uh, yeah, uh, new cultural experiences. Netherlands, of course, is uh, uh, home to people from all over the world. It has a long tradition of, of internationalization of people from all over the world coming here for longer or shorter periods of time. So if you're interested in meeting people from all over the world, this could really be a good place to do that. <clears throat> All right, and academically strong. So we're looking for academically strong candidates with good grades. Um, okay, I'm going to very briefly keep this on the screen. I don't want to go into this in too much detail because I think that this will also be very specific to your uh, own situation. Uh, you can see some examples of, of uh, diplomas we accept, but the Bulgarian high school uh, degree, we have really good experiences with. Uh, so again, the, be the most important thing here, I think, is that there are specific course requirements for programs. So again, if you're studying for example, economics, uh, then make sure you have a good degree of mathematics in your uh, high school so that you have a, a good background. And otherwise you won't be admitted if you don't have enough mathematics. So keep that in mind. Um, there could be an additional selection procedure. Uh, for some programs, there is a limited number of students that are accepted. And in that case, it's either, uh, it, it, you have to apply before a deadline and be selected for the program as a limited number of students. Uh, but not all programs have this. So again, it really depends on the, on the program you're looking for. Um, okay, I'm gonna continue on and let me know if there are any questions. All right, so here we have some more deadlines. Again, I will just leave it on the screen for you guys, maybe to take a screenshot. Um, of course, you're looking at the European Union column, uh, mostly. You can see that he, these two programs, uh, Pharmaceutical Sciences and Global Sustainability Science, uh, the deadline has already passed for entry in September 2021. So if you're looking for entry in September 2022, your application will start in October uh, of this year. All right. Now, for master programs, a uh, similar uh, situation, as I said, a bachelor's degree in a related field, plus some of these uh, documents required. Okay. Um, in terms of fine, oh, in terms of, I'm going too fast. In terms of finances, uh, there are some scholarships available. Uh, most of these are for master students. Um, uh, also, mostly are for students from outside the European Union. Again, keep in mind that the, the price that you're paying uh, for the tuition fee is already heavily subsidized. So most of the tuition fees, sorry, most of the scholarships, they will be available for students from outside the European Union who have to pay a higher fee and would need some extra help. But of course, it's always worth to check out the possibilities there. Uh, there is um, uh, some uh, limited options also from the Dutch government, but there are very strict conditions in terms of how long you must have lived in the Netherlands, how many hours of work you must do. So it gets it gets quite um, uh, specific. Uh, our website has information, um, and also of course, uh, yeah, Skylines can help you give you a sense of uh, what the opportunities are for you. Okay. Um, housing. This is something I want to talk about uh, because obviously now we're in coronavirus uh, situation. Uh, so um, all of mo most of our classes are now being taught online in this kind of format. Uh, some classes are taught from the from the university campus, uh, but it does mean that less students are coming now into Utrecht to look for housing. However, in normal circumstances, uh, Utrecht really is a very uh, popular place for students to study and the housing market is tight. Um, um, uh, you have to really take time to look for a house. You'll move house often because you'll find a temporary house for a few months and then you move to another place. This is completely normal for students in the Netherlands, also in Utrecht. Uh, and it's part of, 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 yeah, sort of being mobile and, 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 and uh, uh, looking around. Um, there are uh, resources, of course, we have housing that we uh, help find, that, that we help find for you uh, together with you uh, through a, a reserved accommodation system. Now, not every student will be able to get a room through that system so that you you'll also end up being on Facebook or Kamernet or through friends. So Kamernet is a website where you can find, uh, find uh, rooms for students. 
Um, so you're going to have to use a lot of different tricks to go and find housing. Uh, don't worry too much. Everyone uh, ends up finding a house in the end. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we always take care of students to make sure that they have a place, something temporary, or we help them out. But again, you have to do a lot of the work, especially beforehand, to go and find a place that you like. In terms of the rent, it can differ. Uh, 350 is quite low. Uh, 800, I would say, is quite a lot. But both, this is kind of the range that you can expect. So normally, it would be between uh, yeah, 450 and 600, let's say. Uh, good to know is that you will always have a private uh, bedroom. So you're never sharing bedrooms. That's not allowed in the Netherlands. Uh, so that's always your private uh, four walls. But you could, for example, share your kitchen or your bathroom or the living room. So that kind of situation could happen where you share it with, with other, uh, other students. But you always have your private uh, bedroom. Okay, so um, one thing that's really famous about the Netherlands is that our level of English is very high uh, and everyone in the Netherlands, basically everyone speaks English, uh, at least enough for you to be able to have a conversation in English. So learning the local language Dutch is really not necessary. Yeah? You don't have to learn Dutch in order to be a successful student or to have a fun time in the Netherlands. But we do also know that students that learn Dutch and that learn to speak Dutch to a specific level, uh, you know, tend to have um, diver more diverse friends, tend to integrate better. It's easier to find a job as well if you speak a little bit of Dutch. Um, so there are so a lot of opportunities that we offer you to uh, learn Dutch. And some of them are listed here. Uh, ESN is a, a international student organization called Erasmus Student Network. They offer a course, uh, which you see on the screen. We also have the International Neighbor Group. Uh, this tends to be a bit more uh, mature uh, students. So let's say between 25 and, and 40 uh, years old. Um, we have Utrecht Summer School, which has uh, a Dutch courses. <clears throat> and there's all types of apps that you can download as well. So if I can give you one tip is that it's really not necessary, but very useful to learn a bit of Dutch. Um, it may sound a bit strange, but the good thing is it's quite close to English uh, in, in many cases. So, um, you know, if you speak English, you can definitely learn a little bit of Dutch. Okay, <clears throat> uh, more information, of course, on our website, you can compare study programs so you can see what are the differences side by side. Uh, you can chat with uh, students uh, from Bulgaria or from other parts of the world uh, through a system called Unibody. This is also available on the website. Um, and there are FAQs with uh, tons of information about uh, all the topics you would want to know. So um, I think we're moving towards the end. Yeah, this is just some Facebook and social media stuff that I'm sure that you guys are able to find without my help, if you're interested. Um, yeah, and don't forget the open days that are coming up. So that's really something I recommend. All right, that's the presentation uh, for me. Thank you all for listening. Uh, I'm curious to hear if you have any, any questions that I might be able to answer for you. So I'll, I'll give the mic over to uh, Dimitar to see what's up. Thank you. Uh, Mitko Mutnitsi. Hi, Mena. There are some questions in the chat box. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, yes. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm like how many? Yeah. I'm scrolling through them. Yeah. Which one would you Sorry. like me to answer? Uh, I think, yeah, the first one is actually Bill Slava. Can we submit the English certificate on a later stage if there is a delay because of the coronavirus? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, you can, let me just stop sharing my screen here for a second. So it's definitely uh, possible to, um, uh, yeah, there I am. Definitely possible to give uh, your documents later on. Um, uh, you can start the application before the deadline and then indicate, for example, when you are going to be receiving the documents or when you're going to be taking the test. And obviously, if you're still in high school, you don't have your diploma just yet, but you do need to make sure you uh, give all the information before the deadline. So this happens all the time, uh, but it's important to give a sense of when are you going to be able to get the documents so that we know uh, what what is expected. And, and it, what happens is uh, if, if you are able to give us uh, preliminary information before the deadline sufficiently, then we can accept you with which what is called a, a conditional admission. So that means that you are admitted on the condition that these documents will be coming later on. Yeah. 
here. And Christina is asking how many Bulgarians are there in the university? <laughs> do you know that? Uh, I, I, I have to admit that I don't know that. No, I do not yeah. know that. Uh, I saw that question. So let me let me get back to you on that. Um, I know that we receive a steady stream of, of Bulgarians every year. So, you know, between mm -hmm. between, let's say, 10, 15 and, 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 and 30 will uh, join the university every year. So over time, that really builds up. Um, yeah. Again, we have, we have 10% international students uh, with over 100 nationalities represented. So I think the chances are bigger that you will meet someone from another nationality than will, you will meet Bulgarians. But what's of course good yes. to know is that uh, through this system called Unibody on our website, you can filter by nationality uh, and by program. So you can look for students from your nationality or from students from your program with a different nationality. And this is a good way to yeah already get in touch with with Bulgarians beforehand. So this answers a little bit the second question of Christian. Are there student societies by interest? Then how do you select students that do get housing from the university? Yeah, you don't exactly right. select them. If they apply on time, they will get it. But yeah, you have to. Yeah. Yeah, I see it here. Are there student societies by interest? Absolutely. This is something that I, I should have included in the presentation. But uh, I think the two biggest groups of, of, of uh, uh, associations is sports associations and cultural associations. So Dutch people are quite sporty. Uh, we really enjoy playing a lot of sports from, from, from basketball, football, uh, hockey. Um, so uh, bouldering or rock climbing is very popular nowadays. Uh, ice skating uh, is something that we're quite uh, fond of and famous for uh, so the, the whole bunch of sports uh, and they are all associations for each of this sporting activity so you can join an association with just students just for that sport same goes for cultural things dance theater singing starting a band uh, all these things happen on a daily basis in a big student city uh, in S Utrecht so yeah and how do you select students for the housing? Yeah, it's a so the, the limited pool of housing that we have, usually it's like a first come, first serve type of a situation. Um, so there is going to be a date, usually in May, that will be communicated to admitted students. And it's kind of like buying tickets for a concert. You have to just sort of log in on a specific time, on a specific day, and hit like refresh a lot. And then, you know, you will either be lucky or you won't be. That's that's literally how, how busy it does get. So again, and this is not to scare you for you guys, uh, but to give you a sense of, in again, in normal circumstances, it can be quite hard. I will say nowadays, I see a lot more advertisements for housing, which didn't really happen. So people who have a room and say, hey, we're looking for someone. To me, this indicates that the market is really slowing down because of the coronavirus. So that's good news for all of you guys, mm -hmm. that it's easier to find a room now than it was before. Uh, this where do I find information on the way the exams are conducted? Why yeah, good it? question. Yeah, we have a website called is if you go to students.uu.nl, uh, maybe I can type it here for everyone. Um, yep, uh, yep. That's a that's a website that you have a login part, but you also have a general part, and it's a really it's a large repository of of information on on all student related matters. Maybe I can pull it up on the screen already for you guys just to give you an idea. Uh, students.uu.nl um, um, and let me see what I can find I'm going to share my screen for a second mm. if I can find it here so here you can go for your study program uh, so let's say for example um, uh, econom economic economics and business economics here we go so this is a website for students it's just openly accessible you don't need to log in but it has everything from your study program uh, to the routes uh, information for new students course registration uh, uh, practical information on enrollment uh, so it will all this is the place where you would find something related to uh, to how our uh, courses evaluated or how our exams being taken care of in general I can say for everyone uh, there is um, uh, uh, exams that you take in, in in lecture halls typically where you sit down and you do pencil and paper tests there's of course essays that you will have to write or presentations that you will have to do in order to um, to pass a course. Uh, and in terms of resits, it depends. Usually there is uh, one resit every year for each course. 
um, and you could sometimes have a, a, a second reset upon request. But this is very specific for each program, so I won't go into too much detail for that. I, I hope that answers your question a bit. Um, there is a question in the Q&A section. How can I register for the open days? Yeah, so if you want to register for the open day, all you have to do is go to our uh, our main website and there will be a, a link to uh, the open day uh, sign up. Um, let me go and actually find a link for you and share it here so that you can, uh, can go there directly. Um, again, there's two masters and uh, bachelors. Um, so depending on what you're interested in, um, you can you can sign up. I'm going to share both of them here, so you have the information. Um, so I'll put them in the I'll put them in the chat. Yes, thank you. And Manu, we will uh, of course uh, include these links uh, in the follow-up message uh, that we sent to the students. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so there's two links. They look like one link to me, but they're they're mm -hmm. two links. Yeah. Um, let's see what else for questions we have. Uh, talk a bit about Dutch culture in general. Is that a good question to uh, to answer? Yeah. Right, including any specific professional field since you already covered what you look for in students. Okay, good. Uh, sure. Yeah. So in 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 general. Um, one thing that's really important to note is that historically the Netherlands is a very open economy. So that means that uh, we are used to people from all over the world working here, contributing uh, their specific skills. And it also reflects in kind of our attitude towards internationals. Um, so meaning that especially big companies are very open to hiring people from all over the world. Um, and, and in that sense, the working culture is quite international. At the same time, uh, there is lots of sectors of the economy that are more traditional, uh, that have uh, you know fewer uh, international uh, people in their in their sector, so they might have they might be a little bit more hesitant to hire someone who's international. Um, uh, again, the best advice I can give any international student is learn Dutch. Uh, even again, if it's not necessary, the the, the amount of Dutch language that you speak will be directly related to how uh, easy it is to find a job in a, in a variety of fields, right? Again, if you don't speak Dutch, there's still options, a lot of them, uh, but you just increase your chances if you uh, speak Dutch because it also signals to Dutch uh, 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 employers that you're serious about being in the Netherlands, that you have a long-term commitment, that you want to stay here. Um, and again, this might depend on your situation, right? Because some of you will be looking for a, a temporary experience and want to you know, work for a few years maybe in the Netherlands or not in the Netherlands at all. Uh, and then maybe you focus on different skills uh, to develop. So let's say that, yeah, the, the, the type of, of especially language skills and cultural skills that you develop throughout your time here that will indicate how interesting you are for for Dutch um, uh, employers. Um, yeah, I, I I hope that that's good yes. for now. For the good answer, and if the term starts in October, how early is early enough to apply for university accommodation? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as I said, there is a date in March in which the housing uh, 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 applications open. Uh, it's mid-March somewhere, so it's not de determined yet. Um, but if you are accepted to the university and you've accepted your offer from us, then you will be included in this mailing information. And I think that if you sign up for a newsletter, which you can also do on our website, you will be kept on uh, on time or updated on all this information as well. Um, so we usually, um, yeah, try to 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 give this this date and time very broadly, so that everyone who is enrolled or is admitted can make use of this. Um, but before and and if you want to look for housing before that, of course, by yourself, it's it, you can do it. Um, but it, with the current situation, in, in, in normal circumstances, I would say there's no, you cannot start early enough. In the current situation, I would say if you start thinking about this in May, that's probably going to be okay, I, I, I suspect, whether it is through our system or through an um, yeah, external uh, Facebook or website, whatever. No more new questions so far. Okay, good questions, guys. Well done. I'm, uh, let's see if there's... Oh, there's one more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm not sure I, I understand it completely. Maybe you can help me, uh, Katja. 
I'm trying. <laughs> uh, maybe the idea is that, let's say, for a certain bachelor degree, you need to have uh, 360 uh, studying hours in mathematics. Right. But you don't have this from your high school, 11th, 12th grade. Is there any way yeah. to compensate or okay good some exams or extra classes or yeah I, I there there are some uh, there are some possibilities and if you look once you go into the program uh, and, you, and you start applying um, uh, you will be uh, redirect you can be redirected to uh, uh, some organizations that we work with uh, in Utrecht uh, that offer uh, deficiency courses mm -hmm. they're called so basically just mathematics or physics uh, if you have already a bit of background in order for you to raise it to the level that we require for in, for admission mm -hmm. they do offer these things even online so that there are uh, possibilities for that this is this you have to do this by yourself so you know obviously it's good that if you're in that situation uh, that's uh, the our team at skylines uh, can help you figure this out and can consult with us on how to do that uh, so there are some options but i do really want to stress i know there are some universities in netherlands that have full uh, preparation uh, years or preparation semesters for students we don't have those so if if you're if you're if the difference between what you have now and what you need to have is too big then it's not going to be possible for you to study but if indeed it's just to raise your mathematics a little bit from what you already have mm -hmm. that that could be possible depending on the program so yeah i hope yeah. that i hope that answers the question it answers the question but also gagana can call us or write yeah. us and we'll give her more details absolutely so, yeah um, yeah, we're waiting for a new question. Oh yeah, there was one uh, question in the Q and A. Uh, if there are special requirements for the literary studies program, are there any special requirements for the literary studies hmm. program? Um, 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 right. Okay. So let's take. We, we can take a look. It's it's quite specific question so let's see if i can get it uh, answered yeah. uh, quickly uh, but we can do it as an example maybe uh, literary mm -hmm. studies you said utrecht university this mm -hmm. is guys this is how i do it as well how huh? we as i said we have over 100 programs so i hope yes. you forgive me if i don't know all of them uh, by heart um so i'm assuming you're looking for the bachelor's literary studies so please tell me if that's not the case um, um and what happens is I'll, I'll, I'll take you guys through it actually it will be nice mm -hmm. share your screen as long as we have some time yes we do okay so even for people not interested in literary studies this this process basically repeats <clears throat> for many uh, programs so you have here the the bachelor's website utrecht university in this case literary studies excuse me um, and you can go scroll down here to uh, entry requirements that's usually where a lot of people look for these kinds of informations. So once you're on this part, it asks you what kind of diploma you have, Dutch or non-Dutch. I've heard from students that they find it very scary to click on this because it seems you're starting an application. Don't worry, you're not. This is just to, to let the website know what information it should show you. So we're going to say non-Dutch diploma. And then you can scroll down and get a lot of information on entry requirements. So um, uh, the question was, are there any specific requirements? Yeah. So here you can see IELTS of, in the, again, if you, an IELTS is needed, yeah, that depends uh, on your previous education. If it was in English or if you've done international baccalaureate degree, then you don't need this English requirements. In other cases, yes. So most of you will have to do it. Uh, the scores that are needed. Here are some exemptions. Um, yeah, so these exemptions are a bit more strict, right? So only IB or European baccalaureate. So even if your Bulgarian school somehow has an English curriculum, it's still you're going to have to do an English test. Mm -hmm. So it's quite strict, this one. Uh, but that's about it. Yeah. 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 So it's it, this one doesn't have very specific requirements for, uh, for, um, uh, for courses. Yeah. But if it were, then it would be listed here. Exactly. This is how we do it as well. Yeah. <laughs> plus, plus experience. Exactly. And you yeah. guys have a direct link with us. So that's good. Yes. Perfect. Oh, I see another question uh, from Christina. Is it acceptable to not come to the Netherlands on time for the start of the term, especially during the pandemic? Yeah. 
uh, I always expect a lot of questions on this and uh, usually we don't get many, but it's good that you are asking this because it is important. Yes, we, you are able uh, in, in, in this situation to, to come to the Netherlands later, obviously because of restrictions, but obviously because health is the most important thing that we have and we recognize that and we don't want you to run any risks or to be extra stressed if you don't have to, uh, to be. And even for students that will arrive here, uh, a lot of the courses will happen online uh, simply because we are it's not possible at the moment to have lecture halls full of students uh, at the university so staying at home for a bit and studying from there is just simply the reality for many students and that means that you could arrive uh, uh, later um uh yeah, so so I think that all, all of the programs, there's a directive from the board uh, of directors that says that, you know, online is uh, when we have we ha when we have to do online, we do online. And if we can do it offline, we do it offline. Uh, but the situation is, yeah, it's changing rapidly. Um, it's it's you know, you would have to really follow the news to be updated on the latest developments. I try to avoid it a little bit, to be honest, because it's uh, it's not the not the most positive thing you can start your day with. Um, but in terms of studying, yeah, everything basically continues as as normal online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in this regard, uh, may I ask a question? Because we do receive lots of questions in this. Uh, are you planning, beside the pandemic, to offer online uh, master degrees? Thanks to the pandemic, probably. But uh, uh, well, for people who are willing to stay here in Bulgaria and to plan this uh, initially. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question. Uh, uh, I, I there is no co concrete plans to have uh, more online masters than we already have. We have a few masters that are online. For example, epidemiology, which is coincidentally about the epidemic, uh, that is one that was online or th there was an online option, and that will continue. Uh, I don't know of any specific initiatives, but for sure, Dutch universities, including Utrecht University, will be changing. Eh? Where we thought maybe last year this is a temporary very thing uh, we, we are quickly realizing that this is a fundamental uh, oppor an opportunity to fundamentally change and to innovate as well so I, I would not be surprised at all if we start offering these masters uh, but I'm, I'm relatively well connected in the university by now and at the moment there's no specific talks of doing anything but so maybe a few years down the line yeah for now we're just focusing on giving people the traditional um, uh, masters and bachelor's degrees where uh, we use online as a yeah, temporary, but not so temporary uh, tool to uh, do a traditional program. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Mm, is the letter of motivation obligatory for the bachelor's program? Because I didn't see it. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, I've also wondered that uh, sometimes for bachelor programs because you will find that some of them listed, some of them don't. As long as it's not listed, it's not required. And keep in mind, guys, I didn't talk about this, but there's a, there's two application systems that you will go through. There's a study link, which is more of a national registry. So it's a very quick process. And then you have OSIRIS online application, which is where you upload the documents. So depending on the program that you're applying for, you can see what documents are needed there. Um, and if you're, something's missing, of course, our student admissions will contact you or uh, the, uh, Skylines will inform you of what is needed uh, as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it could be that it's not mandatory. Mostly for masters, this is needed. For bachelors, often it's not. Yeah. For example, I can add that the Bachelor of Literary Studies, we had some applicants and enrolled students and that it's not required to write the motivation letter. The transcript is okay, CV, resume, and the English certificate if available, and that's pretty much everything that they need. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And I, I know that this is different from other countries uh, around the world, especially, for example, at UK, where you do where they focus a lot on this personal statement, for example. Uh, one thing uh, that I can say is, uh, you know, we have systems in place to 
to make sure that you are the right match for the program beyond just your academic degree. Uh, and that is uh, through a system called matching. And matching basically means that you have, sometimes it's mandatory, sometimes it's uh, 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 optional to talk to someone, a counselor from our university to go over uh, the reasons why you want to study this program. This could be in the form of a, of a call or of a email conversation, but usually it's an assessment over a phone or, 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 or webcam. Um, where you just are asked questions, why did you apply for this program? And do you think this is a good choice for you? What are your goals for the future? To see if your program is, is right for you. And also keep in mind that even though uh, these kind of requirements seem low or let's say uh, easy to comply with, uh, uh, we do have this thing But in the first year of your bachelor, you need to have a specific number of points sometimes as many as 100%, but it could be, let's say, you know, 75% of the courses or 90% of the courses you have to pass in the first year in order to move on to year two. Uh, so that means that, you know, if you are admitted, it also, you know, you have to really perform. You cannot just pass 50% of your classes uh, and then uh, uh, you, won't be, you won't be able to allow it to, to, to move on. So keep that in mind. And this is also why this kind of, you know, information that you're getting beforehand and, and orienting yourself on the possibilities uh, and using this, what's called matching um, uh, service will really help you. Okay, another question from Christina. Is work experience in the industry in a similar but not the same field a drawback or a benefit for an application for masters? Uh, especially even men's and economic hiatus. Right, interesting. Um, uh, as a, as a well, typically speaking, because we are a, uh, a theoretical research university, the biggest focus will be on your academic background. Uh, that's just the most important. The field of study uh, and the grades that you got, the, the courses that you took, um, that's what we're going to look at first. Uh, obviously, uh, work experience is, is, is not going to hurt your application, uh, even if it means that you didn't hiatus uh, to do this work. Um, you know, this happens all the time. Uh, it's not really that um, uh, much of a drawback at all. Um, but I also wouldn't say that it's that much of a benefit either. Uh, again, academic background is what we look for the most. Um, and uh, I think that if your academic background is sufficient and you are applying for a, for a master's with a limited enrollment or for a master's with a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a more work sort of professional related uh, topic, so such as economics, then it could work in your benefit. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, please look for the best academic yeah, fit. That, that's also what we look for. Well, Mendel, thank you very much. I would like uh, just to say a few words about uh, your one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings tomorrow. I see that uh, you still uh, do have a few slots available. So uh, just to encourage uh, the students if they're willing to receive more information and uh, uh, to get more personal touch, uh, if I may say this way, uh, they can still book uh, the few available sl slots that uh, have left. Uh, well, also we will forward uh, most of the information uh, in a follow-up uh, email uh, after this uh, presentation. Also, it is recorded so they can receive uh, your PowerPoint presentation uh, as well uh, in this uh, follow-up email. I do see that there are two more questions. Actually not. So these are your calendly. Just one more question. Are the required hours for a certain bachelor program only from 11th and 12th grade or from 8th to 12th grade? Mm. Right, I think I understand. Um, uh, um, um, ooh, this is complicated. I, usually you look at the last few years of high school for this kind of required hours or required sort of background in a, in a, in a program. But we take into account the whole transcript, uh, ultimately. I mean, you have to send us your whole transcript. Um, and based on that, we make a determination on if you have enough hours or, or not. Uh, if you have any questions about these kind of very specific things, I always recommend to just contact, uh, connect with Skyline's uh, 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 partners, uh, so because they can, you know, help you figuring it out with us uh, and, and and give you a sense because they also have experience with other students that have come to our university, uh, and uh, yeah, so so there there are um, it's too specific for me to, to to answer that one. Yeah. Well. 
it's uh, 1429 you're working like a swiss watch uh, i would say uh, man thank you very much for yeah this, you're welcome uh, yeah presentation and uh, well we'll see you tomorrow again <laughs> Yes, no, tomorrow it will be my uh, colleague, uh, Nick. So the name that you see uh, here, the Nick Lowe, that's <laughs> not me. That will be my colleague. He will be there tomorrow. So good luck, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and the presentations. And thank you, uh, Dimitar, and everyone for the chance to speak. Thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Bye-bye.